Well, Jim, speaking of the AEW locker room, Cody Rhodes this past week, or was it last week, was on Ariel Hawani's show, I believe the MMA Hour is the name of the show, and he commented on his thoughts about the CM Punk fight with the elite at All Out. Did you see any of this or hear any of this? I, I didn't hear it. I saw a, a quote on Twitter, and that's about all I, the depth I got into it. I knew you were going to be asking me about it. Well, I have some audio here. Let's play this. Again, this is from the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani. We're going to review Cody Rhodes on there. Hopefully the audio plays all right. Let's try it now. Gosh, like even... If you remember when he came back, everyone was fired up about that. Everybody. Uh, so when I watched... Let me stop for a second. He's talking about CM Punk coming back. Yes. watched it. Just from my sitting there, I was not... There were some people texting me. I remember somebody texting me, man, you're the smartest guy in the room. And I wanted to write back, like, F you, man. Like, I, I don't feel that way. I feel this thing we built got damaged. And, uh, and I'm not putting any blame on anybody. Uh, sorry, I'm su super Switzerland. In no, this no, moment. I get it. I'm not putting any blame on anybody, but I just hated seeing that. Let me stop for a second. There's no blame to be placed on anybody? Super Switzerland. Well, I mean, it's Super not, Switzerland. <laughs> it's not his place now to come in and say, you know, because people were saying you're the smartest guy in the room. The implication was they were saying you got out of there before the shit started fucking hitting the wall. But I can understand him not being happy that the whole company was in chaos and that they had basically his former co EVPs had run off the their biggest money drawing star. I can understand why he wouldn't be happy to hear that, even if he had already left. You know, and w why should he place blame c to anybody? Because why should he get in the middle of it and then have a bunch of people texting him, whichever side it was? He he doesn't have a dog in that fight anymore. He's overdoing his own thing for the big boys. Well, let's go back to Cody. Because as the company grows, and I hope it continues to grow, I hope people remember the mission in the first place, why we were there. And if you bring in people who don't know the mission, then things like that can happen. And and I'm I'm not saying he didn't know the mission or anything of that nature, but I was just <laughs> well, yeah, I think he just did. Yeah. If you don't know the mission, this is what can happen. I'm not saying he didn't know the mission. However, this is what happened. <laughs> so you are saying he didn't know the mission. What is the mission, Jim? I thought the mission was Tony Khan's got a lot of money and he's always wanted a wrestling company. That was pretty much the mission from Tony's. You know, the other guys thought they were going to change the world. And Cody, uh, I think with every good intention, you know, thought they were going to change the world in the wrestling business. And unfortunately, he didn't realize that he was also going into business with children. He was going to soon become older, older and tireder. Yeah. And again, Cody has been very diplomatic. A lot of it's contractual with an NDA, but he's been very diplomatic about everything there. He won't even admit that there were ever problems with him and the Bucks and Omega. I mean, that's how far it's gotten, but let's go back to this audio. Well, there are, there is the every once in a while, the comment that, you know, everybody had their own view of wrestling and Hey, that's fine. You know, I wanted to do this and somebody else wanted to do that. It's obvious who wanted to do what. That's how I felt. I was bummed out because I have, you win a title. It's a feather in your cap. You win the Royal Rumble. It's a feather in your cap. Building an alternative wrestling promotion is definitely a feather in the cap. I don't want that to be erased. I don't want that to go away. Plus, there's not as many jobs in wrestling as people think. There's about a thousand people who work there, structurally, infrastructure, and talent. I'm proud of them, and I want to make sure they're able to feed their families. And that was a situation that was so big and heavy. Uh, I don't think it was helpful. Right. And I, I don't know, maybe maybe you could make it helpful. Maybe you can do something with it. But it, it was just that's how I felt. No heat on punk. No heat on Matt, Nick, Kinney or Tony. I was just bummed out when I saw it. That's not how we envisioned it. That's the that does. If you were at all in, were you at all in? No. All right. The spirit of all in. If you ever lose the spirit, you're lost. Right. And I think the spirit was gone in that moment. Doesn't mean you can't get it back. But it was just a bummer. Mm. I didn't. uh I also felt weird because I always talked to everybody. So I was like, I don't want to like make it look like I'm taking any sides right, here. Right, right. You know, like I'm literally just an observer now. I'm not there, guys. Uh, no connections, you know, other than the initial connection. So just a bummer. All right, Jim, what are your thoughts on Cody there? 
Well, it just it's 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 a bummer. It's a bummer, man. I mean, you know, again, what else can he say? He can he can, you know, break any NDAs, as you mentioned, and he can piss off a bunch of people that are going to be texting him and whining about it and everything. Or he can just be diplomatic and move on with his day. And I think that's what he's doing there. He doesn't have to worry about it anymore. And he's probably is disappointed to see it from his old cohorts. But that probably also reinforces in his mind that he made the right decision. 